double wide six. And today in the garage, I have this uh, Lawn General 17 horsepower Tecumseh powered lawn tractor. Um, it's got a pretty common problem. It won't start because uh, there's too much compression. So we'll show you what that sounds like. See how it just can't get over the hump. This tractor is basically a Murray and it's just branded Lawn General. What I'm doing here is I'm just checking this battery. Battery's got 12 volts and I'm checking the cold cranking amps and it's coming in at close to 400 which is really good because it's rated at 275. Try that again. Yeah, so the battery is definitely good. So I have this uh, Topton battery jump starter, mini jump starter thing. And this battery, I could tell it's a good battery because it has uh, good cold cranking amps for sure. Um, the voltage seems a little low and that's probably because someone was cranking on it trying to start it And I think the owner said that he had uh, actually replaced the battery But what we're going to try and do is see if I can get this thing to fire I might be able to crank it with this uh, um, Battery setup, so let's see what we get here I'm going to pop off the hood That's loose and we'll see what we'll see if it'll at least crank. And even that isn't able to crank. I'm also going to hook up my battery charger because, uh, like I said, I was coming in a little over 12 volts, like 12.2. Should be higher on just a static battery. It should be you know 12.5 or higher. One other thing on a quick check is sometimes you get corrosion in here or buildup of heat and these nuts get loose on the starter. Um, you can have a wiring problem that can cause you uh, not to have you know full current when you're trying to crank. So uh, we're just going to quick rule that out with our jump starter. So what we can do is Turn that key on run. We'll ground this out and we'll go right on to the stub here. And you can see it still has a ton of compression. I know what's wrong with this thing and it's really not good news. Uh, you know, I should have known better because I didn't pay much for this thing, but uh, the guy that I got it from, he did small engine work. And, uh, you know, I, I got two other engines from him and some of the work was pretty shoddy. You know, he had uh, standard bolts and metric holes and things like that, so I had to retap a couple things. Um, but anyhow, the problem here is the uh, compression release isn't working. I checked the, the valve clearance on this thing and the intake valve is about six thousandths which I think is pretty good and the exhaust valve um, I was getting about ten thousandths and I could tell yeah about ten thousandths there so the valves are set right if you look at the cover, you can see that there's all this RTV sealant smoothed all over the place. This bolt is stripped and he had a, a bolt in there that didn't fit. So, uh, you know, we I could tell he's been in here. He must have figured out what was going on. Now, here's how you know that there's no compression release. Let me zoom you guys in. Up here is your intake valve. I have a spark plug out. There's your exhaust valve. 
Now you should see the, the, the spark, the uh, exhaust valve kind of shudder in and shudder up a little bit. See it's staying still. You should see it go down and up just a hair for that compression release and it's not doing it. Um, this engine, you can replace the entire cam or I think they actually have a kit and it's a uh, Tecumseh Enduro 17. There's like, uh, I think they're actually plastic parts. So I got to pull the engine off this. We'll open it up and we'll see if the uh, internals on the camshaft are broken. Well, I have the uh, tractor jacked up and it's a little hard to see with that light there. But uh, I dropped the deck bracket there so I could, would have access. I pulled out a 5 8 inch nut to get the pulley loose. And now I'm just using my impact and there's four 9 16 holding the engine in place. And um, I'm able to get them using my impact and an extension. Um, I guess I'll try and show you guys getting one. And uh, one other tip, I have this light here and about a month ago I switched it over to uh, an LED light bulb. It's been great because I break that bulb all the time and uh, I've dropped it a couple times and it hasn't broken. So, good little tip for you. Hardest part is finding these bolts, and once I get them located, I just get my socket on there. That one I can't get, I'm going to need a thinner wall socket. There should be one in here. There's holes in the frame where you can get through. So, got that one. I think I just need a thin wall socket for the last one. And the uh, engine should be loose. I have the engine up on the table. And I'm going to go through and loosen up the oil pan. Okay, it's tap and pry time. I didn't clean this thing off just because I want to make sure we got what I think's wrong with it first. And it's starting to come. They don't give you much area to pry, I'll tell you that. Alright, I wanted to put a little PB blaster up here. Just on that seal. There we go. Alright, let's see what's going on. Metal falling out of here. Here's a sump. And this looks like the oil was never changed. This is what they're talking about when they talk about engine sludge. Almost like a jelly in there. But the good news is the sump looks very good. I don't, I don't see any issues with that. And when you get over to the crankcase you can see that there is some metal in here. So we, we definitely have some broken parts and I'm thinking and hoping that it's just the cam which is over here so we're going to line up the cam pull that out of there and we'll see if in fact we do have a broken compression release so what I want to do is line up the timing mark on the cam with the crankshaft and pull this gear out of here
take a vice grip. And we'll see if we can get this to rotate. Something's hitting in here. This one's on the left. This one's on the right. Now we should be able to rotate this thing. Yeah, I guess the gears were just binding. All right, right there is our timing mark. Got them lined up. <clears throat> so now the cam should slip right out. Which it did. And right here's the part that's broken. See that spring and that little rod. Yeah, these lobes look good. So basically what we need to do is order the compression release. And with these decompses, I'm pretty sure you can get just that part. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. And in the meantime, I'm going to clean up all this uh, oil and stuff. I ended up going through and cleaning things up. Got everything looking pretty good here. Uh, I got to order the little kit for the uh, compression release. I think it's only like 12 bucks or something. So I'll put a link to that in the description. And I'll also link the two tools that make this possible. The lift, which is real helpful. And a decent half inch impact gun to loosen up your bolts. Makes this whole job go a lot faster. You guys will have to stay tuned for video two when I put this thing back together and fire it up. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.